Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Uh, Living Streams, we meet at the Zoe Chapel of the Life Cathedral behind Zenith College, behind the Trade Fair. This morning, I'd like to um, capture my thoughts, no return to sender. I'd like to begin this uh, with this story. Many years ago, many years ago, another man of God, friend of mine, came to do a program in Ghana and he asked for my help and the only help he gave I asked of me was to MC his crusade and of course I mean it is the same vineyard it is the same God it is the same Jesus it is I mean it is the same God basically I, I had no doctrinal issues with him I had no theological issues with him he was okay yeah and the, and the message he preached was bringing hope and calling sinners unto repentance. So I thought this was just it. Now after the program, a very senior man of God whom I hold in high esteem, I held him in so high esteem, wrote a letter to me. And that letter, my goodness. I mean, when I, for when I saw that he had written a letter to me, I was happy, I was excited until I started reading the letter oh boy hey and you know that man of god literally tore into me you know it, it was it i can say it, it was a nasty piece this is an older man of god that i respected so much and with what he was he was saying and with what he was what he had written i mean the first few lines were all untruths, and they were not true. And he was writing, I mean, he literally took me to the cleanest. And he was telling me how much he had respected me until that moment when I decided to be an MC for that man of God. And I sat down and began to scratch my head. And I said, ah, but souls got saved. People were delivered. The sick got healed. Uh, the people who hopeless, uh, were walking in hopelessness had hope preached to them. And I went back and I went back and as I began to read more, oh man, and you know, he, 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 he uh, handled the English language very well. I mean, every line was a bomb. And I can tell you that I just kept boiling. I mean, I was boiling. And all sorts of words were running through my mind for, to, to reply. And uh, I was also going to reply, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. I was also going to release words that he will pull the dictionary by his side. You know, I was going to go into Latin. I was going to go into the different scansions. And I mean, I mean, I was going to investigate the English language in response to what he had said. I was angry. Very, very angry. But you know, in my moment of anger, then I just felt Somebody just saying to me, don't throw back the spear. Don't throw back the spear. I mean, when I heard that, I'm like, you two, what, what are you saying? I shouldn't throw what, this thing. Spear for spear, sword for sword, tongue for tongue, language for language. I'm going to march in boot for boot. Good measure, press down, shaking together. You know, I'm from La, the only LA of, 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 of Africa. And the, the, the anointing, the gun, you know, that I mean, boy. But then that voice kept telling me, don't throw back the spear. You know, that's the, the title of my message this morning. Do not throw back the spear. Now, as I was sitting down quietly, and I began to think, it was obvious to me he was sitting in a position of prejudice. But you know what? He's not going to draw me into an argument. He's not going to draw me 
into a fire for fire situation. He's not going to draw me uh, into a situation of offense, uh, retaliating with offense. I'm not going to throw the spear back at him. And this brings me to the story of 1 Samuel chapter 18, where Saul, you know, picked up a spear and threw the spear at David in anger, in wrath, in jealousy. But David never picked up the spear to throw back at Saul. He won't do that. But you know what I did rather? I sat down quietly and then I said, you know, I'm going to go into my bank account. I'm going to empty my bank account. I'm going to shop. I'm going to buy provisions for him. I'm going to package some money. I'm going to visit him and be a blessing to him. Because whatever it is, he has been one of the groundbreaking men of God for the charismatic renewal movement in Ghana. He has, been, he has played a very major role. And this is not the time for me to disrespect him. I'd rather show him honor. I'd rather respect him. So I went and did all that. And then I took it to him and then I said to him, Sir, I'm not one of your sons. But your effort or the things that you did in this nation, whether I like it or not, I'm a beneficiary of it. I understand why you spoke to me this way. This is what you think. And uh, you, were, you, you were saying it out of concern for me because you wanted my welfare. And I, I appreciate that very much. Even though the things you were saying I don't think that is what really happened. So I took my time to explain everything to him. But I said, even before I do anything at all, here is my gift. Here is my blessing for you. He said, all this for me? I said, yes, sir. I said, here's an envelope too. And he looked at me and he said, son, I'm sorry. I said, no, no, sir. Please don't apologize. It's okay. You did it out of love for me. You did it out of concern for me. So this is not the time for me to throw back a spear at you. No, I want to be a blessing to you. He spoke some things over my life. And on one occasion, I ministered at a radio station. He called me and he said, wow. All his life, all his ministry, he has never had such revelatory truth from a young person like me. He invited me to his church. He doesn't invite people to his church like that. We, we, you even fear to go and preach there. And I remember I stood in his church and I preached. And I can tell you this, man, I preached. Hey, whew, I preached. And you know what? When I finished, I mean, when, for somebody like him when you're preaching, he will never a Bible. No, 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 no. He just closed his eyes as if he's discerning what you are saying. So you are even, you are even, I mean, uh, what do you call intimidated just by his posture. I said one, I said two. He picked up his Bible, picked up his notebook, began to write. His, his leaders all picked up notebooks and they were writing. Then, so I stopped and I said, I believe that it's time to write. You know, but guess what? When I finished, there was something he said. I don't really understand. He said, you know what, people? This revelation this young man is carrying, it is not by anything. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to him. This one is by Nephilims and Tephilims. Then I stood by, I was sitting by somebody that went close and I said, what? Is Nephilim and Tephilim. He said, ah, he doesn't know. And I said, hey. He said, Nephilim and Tephilim <laughs> brought me revelation. But ever since that time, that man of God has not ceased to bless me. You know, if I take him the spear he handed over to me and thrown it back at him, that won't work. Sometimes, sometimes, you don't need to take a spear. Let him say what he wants to say. Speak peaceably to him. 
and speak peaceably about him to other people. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Don't return to sender. See you later.